So, check this out. This is what you should be playing. This is how you should be playing guitar. Gary here with Pal Music, and in this video, we're going to go over this amazing approach to playing guitar and practicing guitar that John Mayer outlined in this 2018 Instagram Live. So there's a lot more from John we need to listen to first, so we're going to get back to that, and then we're going to follow all of his practice suggestions at a much more elementary level that even a beginner could do, and then we're going to go really deep on what he was actually playing throughout this video as well. All right, so back to John. We'll take some notes and That's then we'll get really started. That's natural. That's what I do. If you just put the guitar down after that, you will feel so good. And I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to be like Bob Ross, just being like, but I treat it like you can do this at home. But whatever level you're at as a guitar player, sit and just choose and play your choices here first. instead. And it's always fun. I'll still riff around. Play, play what's up here for, like try to come up with what it is you want to do. It's like Photoshop. It's like, you might, you could be good at Photoshop, but if you don't know what picture you want to see, what, what's Photoshop for? So you start developing that sense of what your vision for your song, the next thing you want to hear is, and learning the guitar that way or learning whatever instrument you have that way. Also, I may be completely wrong in that I'm uh, sort of forcing my age on other people and you're still at the age where you just want to keep crushing and I'm all for it. But work this in as a thought process every once in a while. With what you learn, learn to implement it in your own way. Learn the function of a scale and then just sit and slow and even if it's with a metronome. I'm playing music right now. As long as you're feeling that you train yourself to feel that without having to burn, 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 burn all the time, it'll be you'll just be so much of a better player for it. And that's all I, that's what I was doing before I signed on was to practice that stuff. Am I trying to think inside the scale? No. I don't think even about the scale anymore, really. Um, yeah, just implement it. When you learn something, no matter what it is in life, if you learn how something works, start slotting it into your brain and how, how you want to express yourself with it, that's all. But you still have to practice. See, here, here's the trade-off. You still have to practice. So I'm not telling you don't practice pentatonic scales. Practice, 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 play and play and play. But wouldn't it be fun at the end of a practice day to give yourself a five minute timer, 10 minute timer, however long you want to just meditate inside of what you know. Even if what you know is you've been playing for three months, you just know the pentatonic scale and you're just starting to learn how to bend up to the note a little bit. Just cl narrow down your focus so that's what you do for five or 10 minutes and say something with it and learn to implement it in a way that is a very expressive and isn't about playing guitar, it's about playing music for a minute. You'll feel, you'll go to bed so happy. You go to bed so happy, and I'm gonna go to bed so happy. Not now. I'm gonna play some more guitar, and I'm gonna go to bed happy. And that was Sunday night guitar lessons. And I thank the world of you all, and I will talk to you later. And thanks for listening and watching. <laughs>
Okay, bye. So is it any surprise that this is how John Mayer practices and plays guitar? To me, not at all. He's a singer, songwriter, composer. He's someone that has a vision for how things should sound and then brings it into reality. So I don't think it's a coincidence that so many of our favorite guitar players are also singer-songwriters. Jimi Hendrix... crafted some of the most singable solos of rock history, such as this one on Wish You Were Here. Tom Mish. I'm playing some tasty riffs here on his NPR Tiny Desk concert. Stevie Ray Vaughan. So this clip's from the song Tim Pan Alley, live in Tokyo, about alcohol addiction, and he just said, that's how it is. So Stevie's exercising his demons right here, not just singing, but crying through the guitar. Gary Clark Jr. Now what's great with Gary is he can play a solo using just one or two notes and it's awesome because there's so much feel. Check this out. But then once he gets going, he could shred as well. Oh yeah. It's Kenny Burrell. Man, people were obsessed with Kenny Burrell's sound. SRV covered his song Chitlin's Cone Carne. Eric Clapton. The legend himself letting it rip here on a slow blues. George Benson. Benson would combine guitar with scat singing as a regular part of his act, so he was kind of the pioneer with this. B.B. King and all the Kings, Freddie King, Albert King, all the great blues singer-guitar players. It's a complete package. They write songs, they sing, they play the guitar, right? So it's all just the voice. It's all just musical intention coming out with whatever tool they happen to have. So us guitar players that don't write, don't compose, don't sing, we might go, you know, years without really connecting to what we're playing. We're just playing things we learned. We're pressing certain buttons at the right time because we know that it'll work, right? But we wonder why we don't have our own voice, why we don't have that special touch that we hear in John Mayer's playing. So we want to create that connection by using the voice, by listening to that voice in our own mind. So even if we don't want to be a singer, we're going to use our voice to help us sing through our guitar. So we're going to go from the mind, out the vocal cords, onto the guitar, we build that connection, and then we sing through our guitar. So you're going to see me attempt all that in this video at a level that's not even close to Bob Ross. If John Mayer's on the mountaintop, I'm just your regular guitar player walking down the road. So I'm going to try to put to the test some of his ideas on how he's practicing and some of the stuff that he's doing to just kind of give you an idea of how us, you know, mere mortals can try to do this as well. We're gonna to listen to the rest of the video, talk about it, try to put some of the activities into action, and then at the end of the video, we're gonna analyze everything that he created and played during the video, such as in the beginning with our Fret Live animations where you know he went from A minor to C major, then he played a little bit of harmonic minor scale, Dorian mode, we had that chromatic chord progression, and so many other great things he played as well. If you want to download the tab to go along with this lesson, so everything you saw in the Fret Live is also tabbed out, numbers on the lines as playable tab or PDF. And if you want a PDF with the different chord progressions he played, that's all available for Pound Music patrons. 
and the link is in the description. By becoming a patron, you could also join me for twice weekly live small group interactive guitar hangouts and access the entire back catalog of tab and additional resources for all my lessons. Also in the description, you'll find links to free scale PDF downloads for the diatonic scale and pentatonic and blues scales, and also discount codes for Pal Music's courses that all use the Fret Live technology. All right, let's get into it. So like I said, he said we could do this at whatever level and that we should play what you hear inside. Now you might be wondering, well, I don't hear anything inside. I've, I've never composed before. What does that even mean? So let's go all the way down to no guitar metronome and just trying to feel something first. So even if it's with a metronome. I'm playing music right now. Try to feel a beat, right? Feel that beat with me, right? And now just try to imagine something happening over the beat. You could close your eyes if you want. It could just be a rhythm. If it's just a rhythm, maybe it's something like ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 ba. So even if you're not comfortable with pitch yet, just trying to hear a rhythm in your mind. There's so much you could do with a rhythm. Let's say we're in the key of A minor. And we want to use that rhythm. Ba 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 da ba da ba da ba. Right, that could become the basis of an improvisation, the basis of a song riff. So any little idea has the potential to turn into something really awesome. It doesn't have to be the first thing you do. You know, you could do this process for a long time until you find something that you really like. So now I'm going to try to hear a little bit of melody which is the combination of actual pitch and rhythm. So see if you could hear just a simple melody. It could be just a few notes. So I just heard And then that made me hear so I was basically just mumbling, right? With a little bit of pitch. And then that led to... Right? So now, starting purely by ear, I'm going to see if I can put that on the guitar. So... I don't even know anything about scales or anything. I'm just trying to match pitch. That's a D. Fifth fret on the A string. See if you could find that. Do goes down. Do goes down again. Do. fifth fret, third fret, open on the A string, or what I'm going to do is play the A on the low E string. So, five, three, five on the E. Then I went. Right? Two of the same notes. So I know I'm in this A minor tonality, and that's probably what I heard from the riff earlier is in my head. So being I know my A minor scales, this is A minor pentatonic, it sounds mostly pentatonic to me, then I have an idea of where the note's going to be by knowing the sound of the scale, right? So, da 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 let me put that all together. One, two, three. Now when I 
did that. Dia. I knew that was not pentatonic. That was a half step. Dia. Do. Let's stop right there. So see, I'm trying to combine my knowledge of the key with what I'm hearing with where it is. Now, even if you don't know any scales, you could still find it. It just helps to know the framework to say, okay, I'm in the key of A minor. What I'm humming is probably in the key of A minor or very close, right? So let's play it an octave higher. So instead of, we'll go one, two, three. kind of thing. Now, if you don't know your scales, give yourself even more credit. You figured it all out with no theory knowledge whatsoever. And then maybe after the fact, try to figure out, okay, what key is it? Let me try to figure out what scale this is in, right? So you can go pure ear and then seek out the knowledge to try to make sense, context, function of what you're actually playing. Even if what you know is you've been playing for three months, you just know the pentatonic scale and you're just starting to learn how to bend up to the note a little bit, just cl narrow down your focus so that's what you do for five or ten minutes and say something with it and learn to implement it in a way that is a very expressive and isn't about playing guitar, it's about playing music for a minute. You'll, feel, you'll go to bed so happy. All right, so he said even if you just learned a scale, right? So let's say, let's just take A minor pentatonic. I would recommend trying to sing the scale. I have a horrible falsetto. It doesn't really work. So that note I can't really sing. Let's see if we could sing it in one octave. Okay, so now let's see if we could hear something that sounds like it's from that scale. So we had boom, 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 boom. That's the scale. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, let's go backwards. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 ba da boom, boom. That's something that I'm hearing within that scale. Boom, 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 da da boom, boom. And then he mentioned, you know, trying to make it sound more expressive. Slide. Maybe a little bend there. Maybe I do a bend. There's a scale again. Right, so now I'm also developing my instincts for if I want to hear that sound in my head, how do my fingers have to move to make that sound, right? I'm making the connection between what I'm hearing and the way my fingers have to move to make that happen. All right, so that was the end of the video. Now we're going back to the beginning. He kind of taught a lot of just riffs and things in the middle, but in the, in the beginning and the end, he really talked about his philosophy to practicing. So let's see what he said in the beginning. I'm playing sound stuff out. It's like a calculator, you know? It's like a music calculator. And as long as I know where my ear wants to take the bass line of something, then I can sort of just compose through things. As long as you know what you kind of want to do next. Like last night I went, uh, if I'm in C. I mean, 
that's absolutely beautiful. But the main point he just made there is as long as he said, as long as I hear the bass line, I could compose through it. So he's hearing bass lines. So we start with one note. Bow, then try to find that note. We've got a match. Boom. Then try to hear it, the next chord. So that's our bass note. Boom. Bow, do. have to go there that's just what I heard boom, 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 boom. I could have done something completely different I could have gone boom 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 but that's not what I heard boom 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 that's a G so I've got A, A, C, C, B, C, G, do, do, E, G. So I've got A, A, C, C, B, B, G, E, G, A. Right now, maybe I want those to be actual, not just a bass line, I want to add chords. So first place to look is, let me think of these as root notes. So is this going to be a minor chord or a major chord? Definitely minor. How about this? Major, so minor. What happens if I do the opposite? No, right? Now this one, hmm, I don't like either of those. I don't like the B to be a B minor, B major. So maybe this note is not the root note. Maybe it's the, you know, the fifth of the chord or the third of a chord. So if it was the third of a chord, it would be the third of the G chord. Like if we think here's a G, but we start on this note, so we could do something like, so then that would be. I like the sound of that. And then maybe this is part of the same chord. Right, so like. Okay, now I'm gonna try to hear a melody. So I'm hearing do, 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 da, de, do. So I know I'm in the key of A minor. So by knowing the key, it helps me kind of narrow down what I'm probably singing. I'm probably singing in the key of A minor. So I'm in this A minor scale. You don't have to know that to do this activity. You could just... But when John talks about function, learning a scale, then implementing it, it helps to have the roadmap. Having the roadmap is going to give you confidence to find what you're looking for and to just go for it. Let's see if I can play this riff over the loop. Let's do that in a, in a different octave. There we go. So we got. All right, so there's the first phrase. So let's see what else I could hear. I don't have to go with the first thing I hear. I 
like that. So, That's nice. Okay, so. I like this. Nah. Okay, so. See, I found another place to play it as well. One, two, three, four. Right, so simple. I think anybody can do this, right? Maybe I did it a little faster then you will do it, but I also had to for the sake of the video. I don't want you to sit here for 20 minutes. But if you have to sit for 20 minutes with that metronome until something is in your head, so let it be. Let it be 20 minutes, right? Some people never write a song in their entire lives. If you need 20 minutes to come up with your first phrase, that's nothing. <laughs> that's just a tiny drop of time, right? So... You can sit there and just try to hear something come into your head and then try to match it. Even if it's a single note. Um, uh, again, A flat. Something with A flat is in my head. Um, then try to hear another note to go with that. Um, bo, do, do, do. See, that's a little bit of ear training right there. I know that do relative to this note, do is a fifth do. If you want to get good at that stuff, join my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery Program. Do, do. All right, so here we go. Bo, do, do, do. I sang the pop progression. It's in my consciousness. One, five, six, four. One, five, six, four. That's fine. But now, I'm not playing it because I don't know what else to play. I'm playing it because I heard it. That's a huge difference, right? Let's try with that one. So... So that was A flat to e, e flat major to F minor to D flat major. One, five, six, four. that happen so I'm trying to find a good place okay here we go so now I want to see if I can do both simultaneously Okay, see, I was hitting the wrong note. Let me just get that phrase down. Okay. One, 
one, two, three, four. Da di do do. Da di do da di a da. Da di da 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 da. Yeah, there we go. Da di do do. Da di do da di a da. Da di da do do da do. So that's another great thing we saw John do is try to sing what you play, sing what you hear and hear what you play and put it all together at the same exact moment. So like George Benson was a master of that, but John Mayer's no slouch. So now let's check out the bass line and chord progression that John Mayer heard in his head. Last night I went, uh, if I'm in C. So this bass line he's hearing, C, G, F, F, B flat, C. But the chords he's putting there are very unconventional. C major to G minor, that's a minor five chord. That is like a mixolydian mode thing. But it's also from her and Daniel Caesar's best part, which came out just before this Instagram video. Huge hit. John Mayer performed it with Daniel Caesar on his show, so that was probably rolling around in his head, the sound of that. That's a great sound. I have a lesson on that. We have one, minor five. Usually the five chord is major in a, in a regular major key. A major four, which is in both C major and C mixolydian. But then, minor four, which is more like a, just a chromatic thing back to the one because then we get this this right if we think one is the C chord so we have so that's just the typical way to get back to the one chord in a bittersweet way but instead he goes That's flat seven major, which is also native to C mixolydian mode. So that's all mixolydian right there. But anyway, so he starts with the bass line. He hears the chords filled in. to see ba ba da -dum. Oh, 
then he ended up in C minor going uh, B f going A flat major, G major, or G dominant to C minor to F major. So he started with C major to G minor to F major, F minor, B flat, but then he ended up going A flat major, G dominant to C minor to F major, right? So just taking it in different directions and hearing things on top. Um, where I'm at now is I sit and I practice intention. So what does that mean? It means like, we all know how to talk. We know a lot of words and I'm super guilty of this. Go around using them just because we know them. But if you talk from the heart and your intention is real, you don't need to use the world's biggest words. Like, you complete me are not collegiate level words. They're just really great use of language for intentions. You know, it really it has a full intent to it. So like, I can actually mix this with, with dead guitar because someone just asked about dead guitar. So what you what what I what I practice doing and it's much more of a mental practice and I I cannot stress enough for other guitar players to practice doing this is practice thinking from the idea first instead of what the guitar offers you get out of the geometry it's not whack-a-mole there's a, like just because they're here just like you know words doesn't mean you just start mashing them you can just like it's fun to freestyle it's fun to come up with ideas it's fun to riff with your friends but in terms of like coming up with statements on the guitar, for me, it's not looking at this based on what do I know scale-wise. Uh, so, so I'll show you. Like, sometimes I'll just sit down and go, we'll pick A, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll just go, I'll, I'll make this up. But in my head, I'm keeping time and I'm hearing a certain uh, rhythmic bed and, and a harmonic bed so that I don't have to overplay on the guitar. And I just focus in. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'm just hanging there and I'm hearing a rhythmic bed and a harmonic bed. So he had his tempo and what he was hearing was A minor. F. E7. Okay, now let's talk about one thing he said learn it then implement it your own way and find the function let's take one of his riffs and learn it and implement it our own way let's take the first thing he played Okay, so the first riff more or less was one, two, three, four, one. Right? So what is the function? Well, the chord is the one chord, A minor, in like a minor blues, which goes one sharp five major, five dominant to one. And on that one, he goes, that's, so it has a sound. And what is it functionally speaking? It starts on the root, one, flat three, four, flat three, two, flat seven, one. So it really revolves around this A minor chord. So we want to see it, how it overlays over the chord. So in 
in this main pattern of the pentatonic or the minor scale. So it's not just notes, it sits in this A minor scale. And it uses this flat seven, this one, this two, this flat three, and this four. Right now, saying it our own way. Let's see if we could take that as a motif and move it through the full progression. So I want to see if I can make that riff work over all the chords. That's how I'm going to try to implement it, and I'm going to try to work around the rhythm a little bit. Here we go. Now, I feel myself wanting to use my intellect to make it work over the other chords, but I'm going to force myself to hear it first. So we've got... That's what I hear. So now I'm implementing it my own way. See, I want to hear it and then be able to play it. Yeah, so I'm hearing something like that. Okay, almost there. That's really natural. That's what I hear. Yeah, I really like that note. Oh, yeah. That does work. Okay, that was the right note. That's cool that I heard that. I feel a bit of a confidence boost because where intellectually I know that this note goes over this chord and I all the time do intellectual things like that, like I might be going along. But that's like, that's coming from a place of knowledge, right? And I might half hear it, half know it, but this came purely from hearing. So I played that note. I sang it and then played it. So that is such a deeper reason to play something than because you know it makes sense. You heard it, right? It's a million times better than because you know it. It's because you heard it, right? You hear it inside, inside out. So the more you do this, the more you try to hear things over the chords, the more you'll have to say.
on your instrument, right? But that was an example of learning it from John, but implementing it my own way. His riff is what was my starting point. His riff was my creative fodder, right? And I don't have to go, I don't have to go. I could go. Right? That's, that is from his riff. But it's a rearrangement of his riff, right? So implementing it my own way. But I know the function. The function is, it starts over an A minor chord. If I'm on a G minor chord, I can remember, oh, that's the minor chord function. And play the same thing. I'm on a C minor. So now it's part of your vocabulary, but you can implement it your own way. And just that foot keeping. Mm, 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 mm. That's nice. So we go one minor two five. We said one minor two five. See, John knows structure too, function. So in the key of A minor, A minor, but then he plays a B minor and then to an E7. Okay, find a motif. Find motif. So his motif's kind of rhythmic. Ba 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 Right, so. So if that's his rhythmic motif, let's play that chord progression. So we could take that motif and move it to different places, but maybe try to hear it like he did. trying to do there is start the motif the same way but then end it differently so let's do that a little more one two three four
So that was fun. I started the motif on the guitar and then tried to finish it with my voice and then play the whole thing on guitar with my voice. So I got to say, this is like, like he said, just do that and you'll be able to go to sleep feeling great. Like I feel so much, I feel so musical because I'm not just pressing buttons. I'm like, I'm having an emotional musical intention and I'm bringing it to life. So there's so much more of a sense of creation going on, uh, which feels awesome. So, you know, we like swam, we swam out past the buoys because we were in A. And you just keep swimming and exploring and tracking in your brain what works and what doesn't. And you get so much more, I feel like, out of... Mm, 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 mm. And don't use the guitar as this full bore thing to just bang out as much guitar music as you can bang out. You know what I mean? Investigate everything you play and find out, is it because it's a note you want to play or is it because it's in the jungle gym and it's fun to climb around and, and, and you're just doing it because it's there. That's what I'm trying to take out. All right, so that's the extent of what he had to say about how you should practice, how you should play guitar. Let's go over what he played in that intro because there's a lot of cool stuff there. Put it didn't do So he starts with this little A7 sus2. I wouldn't play it like that, I would play it like this. I'm not as much of a thumb over person. So I would do second finger, ring finger, index, pinky. But now, if you if you add this note on the if you add the fourth fret of the A string, it's just an A9. So he's just leaving out the third, which is what makes it a sus. So this is sus, and this would be A9. And a lot of times without a bass player, people play A9 like this, without the root. Which incidentally is the same as a C sharp minor seven flat five. But once we have the A, it's an A9. Great chord, great in the blues, you know, like something like. That kind of thing. All right, so now these pentatonic riffs, I'm not gonna walk you through them because you, you could see them, uh, but we'll talk a little bit about this chord progression. So this chord progression he played a lot throughout this video. It's kind of like a minor blues thing where you got A minor. Even though he didn't play A minor, it's implied. And then you go to the flat six major chord. In this case, F major seven and then to the five chord as a dominant. So like, if you think Thrill is Gone by B.B. King, the turnaround goes, but in the key of B minor, you know, so Thrill is Gone is like, if we're in the key of A minor. Four bars of A minor, two bars of D minor. back to A minor. Now we go to F major, E7, A minor. Actually, I don't even think they go back to the five at the end. But anyway, so it, it's very typical of a minor blues. So. But then when he goes to the F, he just does the same thing, but starts on the F. So he's hearing that chord tone. Boo, that root, boo, do. Which is obviously outside of the pentatonic, but I left it pentatonic here 
because his phrasing is mostly pentatonic based phrasing, and I wanted to start you simple before moving in to where things are very obviously he's playing more diatonically instead of pentatonic. <laughs> Now, really cool thing there, over the E7, he's bending to the sound of the major third of the five chord. So whereas a lot of times people go, right? You wanna bend that note a half step on the five chord because a half step up is the major third of the five chord. Right, so control of those bends in tension. So we have that house of blues area which is part of pattern two. But most people don't play much in the lower strings of pattern two, but on the top three strings, it looks like a house. And then he goes, uh, and then he backs down into this little two by two of pattern five. So when we come down, we could just bypass this note and instead play it here. So. All right, so now he's gonna to transition to key of C and he's gonna play a two, five, one in C, very jazzy. So two being D minor, five being uh, G7, and then one being C major, but the five, but the two he's gonna play as a D minor nine. Then the five, he's gonna keep this common tone, the note uh, E. And then to the one. So this note stays there. Right, so we got. Very jazzy. Okay, so now. He's playing the five chord of A minor. So A minor and C major are relative major and minor. They have the same notes. That's why you see the same scale shapes. It's just we tonicize relative to C major, we tonicize the sixth, which is A. Relative to A minor, if we want to go back to major, we tonicize the flat third, which is C. But same notes. So on a piano, if you play all the white keys, that's key of C or A minor. If you make A your home note, it's going to sound like A minor. If you make C your home note, it's going to sound like C major because your ear is hearing all the notes relative to whatever you make sound like the home note. So this makes this sound like the home note, whereas this makes this sound like the home note, right? It's all ear trickery. So after he does the two, five, one. Now that is the dominant chord, which this tritone wants to resolve to this. This note wants to go here, and this note can go back down to here. So we've got this. He plays a little blues scale thing. And, and, you know, his pitch there wasn't perfect. It was nice to see John be really flat for a moment. 
and go, D-d-d-d. he didn't quite hit it with his voice, but he knew the framework on the guitar, and that framework got him there because he identified, okay, I'm doing that chromatic blues scale thing in my voice, I'm trying. So now we're back in A, now this is my favorite part. So he starts with A minor. So this chord progression is actually almost identical to Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. It has this chromatic line that passes through all the chords, and that creates some really cool harmony. Check out how close they are. Okay, so here we got A minor. Do, do, and this is clearly a diatonic mentality. Do, 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 do. But then he comes down to that note. Now, as you see, when that happens, what I have listed there is the A harmonic minor scale. So all we did to create A harmonic minor is we raised scale degree seven from a flat seven to a major seven. Great sound, listen to the sound of the scale. Right? So if you were improvising over this, and I'll demonstrate in a minute, the fact that he's playing an A minor major seven, that means an A minor chord with a major seventh, means that if you just modify that one note and you are improvising through that scale, you're really gonna lock in with that chord. Okay, so then he didn't play the actual chord, but the motif here with the chords is to go A minor, A minor major, so you, we're just dropping that note down one fret. A minor seven. So we got do, do, do. Where do you think we're gonna go next here? Do. And that's gonna be the third of the D major chord. So this note is the same as this note. So if here's how you might be accustomed to playing, say a D major in the A shape. This is a D major in the G shape but we're starting on the third. So we've got. Right? Now that is a major four chord in a minor key. What that insinuates is Dorian mode. Because to have a one minor to a four major only exists as Dorian mode. In other words, as if you were in the key of G major. So now what you see on the screen is a Dorian mode, and that accounts for this note. Think Oye Como Va, which is A minor to D major. That's a classic. So here he does that when he goes from the A minor to a D major. So again, if you want to be improvising through the scales at that moment and account for those chord tones, you're going to want to nail that, in this case, F sharp. to the flat six major, which is diatonic to the key of A minor. So now we're back in A minor. And he goes. Right, just kind of runs up. One, three, sharp, four, five, the Simpsons. So in a minor key, the flat six, if we think of all the tones relative to the flat six, we have what's called a sharp four. And that's the sound of Lydia mode. The 
the Simpsons. But it's still all just in the key of A minor, so you don't have to think about it like that. It's just the notes in the key of A minor, and he's just connecting these chord tones with one of the scale tones. So you don't have to think about it modally, but... But being he's sitting there, it does have that Lydian sound. Do, 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 do. And then, finally, back to the five chord. And now there, because we make that, that chord diatonic to A minor should be an E minor. But we make it an E7, which has a major third, again to create that gravity, that pull, back to the tonic when we resolve back to A minor. This motion. As opposed to this. That doesn't have the same... If, I, if it was an E minor, this would be the quality. Those sound kind of separate, but this sounds da tension. I want to go home, home tension, home. So we make that five chord dominant, even though in the minor key that's non diatonic. And by doing so, again, we end up with that harmonic minor scale that we could shed over that five chord, and it'll sound really good, which is what he does. He goes. And then resolving back to A minor. Yeah. So if we just put that in the looper, and you wanted to practice these scales over that, you can go A minor. A minor major. A minor 7, D over F sharp, F, E7. Okay, so when I start, I'm just going to be in A minor. Then the second chord, I'm going to be in A harmonic minor. Third chord, back to A minor. Fourth chord, A Dorian. Let's see if I get that much. So let me walk you through it. Ready? So minor scale. Harmonic minor, back to minor, Dorian, minor, harmonic minor, one, two, three, four, five, six. Might be cool to just look at it on the top two strings. Ready? So top two strings. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that was it. So we've got minor, harmonic minor, minor, Dorian, minor, harmonic minor, and then back to minor. So really the line cliche goes all the way up. Do, 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 do. So it's called a line cliche. Line cliche is just a chromatic line that carries through a chord progression. You know, uh, Led Zeppelin.
Awesome. All right, everybody, if you really want to understand how music works in general, but on the fretboard in a way where you're applying what you're learning each step of the way, sort of like this, we're talking about, okay, here's how, you, you know, here's three different scales and here's how you might use them in a chord progression, or here's how different chords fit together in a key in the context of something that John Mayer is playing. Check out my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery Program. We start in the very beginning with the chromatic scale, just all 12 notes, and not only seeing them as letters, but as intervals, because the study of music theory is all about intervals. You heard John Mayer say, all right, this is just a minor two, five, one. Numbers, intervals, right? Understanding the function of what you're learning, how it fits with what chord you're playing, that kind of thing. So we start really simple. Then we get into how we can use the intervals of the chromatic scale to create a key with the major scale, how from the major scale we create these chords within that scale, then how we have our relative minor scale. Then we do cage part one, two, and three, where we see all the different chord forms and scale forms and how they go together and how you could intermingle them. We get into all sorts of other cool chords, seventh chords, ninth chords, sus chords, and we end things off in unit 12 with modes. So it's a live session where you can, at the same time as 40 other students, get access to a new unit every week or two, and you share your work, and we meet up in Zoom sessions, and we communicate, and I kind of go over what the week's topic was, and we do some ear training together, and we perform for each other if you want. It's totally voluntary. Uh, or you could do a self-paced program where you don't actually interact with me or classmates, but you just have access to all of the coursework all at once. You don't have to wait week by week. So links for that is in the description. So I would really like to see some of you take these activities and come up with your own thing. Maybe it's the seed of a song that you end up writing and it starts doing this kind of an activity. So please do that. Share it with me on Instagram at Pow Music, or you could share it in the Fretboard Adventures Facebook group, or come join me during one of my weekly live Patreon sessions. There's small group guitar hangs, for anyone that's a patron at the $5 or more level, you can join these sessions twice a week. There's usually anywhere from five to 10 people. We're all on screen together. We interact, we play together, and this happens twice a week for the last three years. So if you want to join us there, if you download the tab to go with this lesson, then you'll automatically become a patron and you'll be able to download tab for all my previous lessons. And like I said, join us for these weekly live Patreon sessions. All right, everybody, happy playing. I'll see you next time. Before I go, I'd like to extend a special thanks to the following upper tier POW Music patrons. William Creighton, Andrew Gunthart, Bill Laborde, Boomer Dell, Brad Tomlin, Bruce Yell, Chris Freeman, Dave Hubner, David McPherson, Derek Mickle, Don Stringham, Donald James Grass, Fred Locke, Joff Weatherwax, Jake Martin, James, hey. Jay Brilliant, Jesse Jacobs, Joe Prangle, John Barnes, John Bunyan, John Cushman, Jonas, Joseph McCarthy, Kay Carter, Kent Gresson, L.W., Michael L., Michael Varney, Minor Pentatonic, Mu Jang, Nicholas Steinkamp, Patrick Bennett, Paul Davies, Randy Wallingford, Randy Yoakum, Scott Lee, Sean Ellis, Steve C., Stephen Pisano, Trampus Thompson, William Sitko, and all of the rest of the POW Music patrons. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Happy playing, and I'll see you guys next time.